Hi. Hi, TikTok. Um, I'm just going to preface this by saying um, I have been adopting a sort of weird, I'm trying to work on myself like personal growth. And I decided like if I have intuition for something or something goes through my head that I feel like I should do something, I've just been doing it. So I've just been kind of like adopting this mindset of like, uh, if I'm thinking about doing it, let's just do it and let's just see what happens. You know, if I have a bad feeling about something, I'll, you know, act on the bad feeling. If I feel like I want to do something, then I will also do that as well. So, um, it just kind of came over me like the last couple of days that maybe I should do, sorry, I have a little mic here, so I'm sorry if I, if I hit it at all. Let's see. Uh, hopefully I don't mess up the sound. Um, I've been thinking about for a couple days now, uh, doing like a little story of like my background, I guess. And like why I am what I am or where, how I got here or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to attempt to do the story time stuff. I'm not very good with storytelling, uh, off like the bat. I tend to ramble. So you're going to have to bear with me if you're interested in it at all then let me know, uh, or not let me know, just keep watching, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's sort of, uh, my story of like, I grew up in a very new age home. So like, you'll see on my page, I talk about like ghosts and I talk about witch stuff and things like that. And there's a reason that I am like the way I am and how I got here. Um, and I grew up around all this stuff. So like, this is like not, something that I came to do when I got older. Like I, I've been doing this stuff since I was very, very little. So I thought maybe I would come tell the story. Um, to start off, I do have fibromyalgia. I mean, okay, we'll start with kind of the current. I have fibromyalgia and I sort of have MS. I have like this, I've had MS attacks, but I just have one, one off attacks. So they can't diagnose me with a specific kind of MS. Uh, so my fiber brain sometimes does weird things and I forget what I'm saying or I jumble up things. So just bear with me with stuff. Like even with my content, you'll see sometimes I'll mention like, oh, my fiber brain has made me do weird things this week on this content. Um, and I talk about it if you watch some of our watch together stuff with like KK. KK has fiber as well, a friend of ours that's in the watch together clips. And she has the same problem. So please excuse any like me forgetting words uh, or jumble on things as I tell this story. So, but yeah, so this is a very long intro. I apologize, uh, but <laughs> let's get into it. Hold on. Let's get into it. Um, okay. So where to start? Um, as far back as I can remember, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really remember stuff from like when I was super young. I just remember like little memories and stuff like that. But I would say probably like I remember daycare um, and I, I was always like reading ahead of the class and stuff like that. My mom put me in phonics very young. Uh, my mom like really pushed me to be like this intellectual. Like if it was the Gilmore Girls, I was like... My mom was like Lorelai and I was like Rory, like she was constantly pushing me to like, you know, push my intellect and everything. So, but my mom went to university, um, and she took philosophy. So not really a useful degree. Uh, but while she was in university, she was, she was a bit of a hippie. Uh, well, she was a pretty big hippie actually. And like, she used to take part in rallies. Uh, she even did some of the, I think they're called is it Black Panther or something like that from like the 70s, 60s, 70s? Um, so she took part in like those rallies and things of that nature. My mom's always been into things like that. Uh, she was big into like Aboriginal culture as well. So growing up, I was also exposed to a lot of that as well. So first off, um, you'll see like my username is Florio. And I mean, in all of my videos and stuff, you see my friends refer to me as Fleur. That is my real name. My mom is a hippie and wanted to name me after a flower. I'm not French at all. Um, so, and that was just my mom's cat. If you heard the noise. So I started off with that. Uh, so I grew up in a very like new age home. What my mom did for a living 
and she was actually a psychic and she actually did that for a living so people would come over to the house she would do readings for them um she did past life regression she did psychic readings numerology astrology uh she did like everything right so this would be back in like i don't know was it the 80s uh 90s like early 90s like i guess late 80s early 90s i can't remember uh she would go to psychic fairs we would always be at these like psychic fairs and depending on how old you are you know what i'm talking about <laughs> so um but it was like part of her job so i would be at psychic fairs for like a weekend or a week or whatever it may be and i spent a lot of time there so i was constantly like involved in the community and i was always in this like spiritualist movement in this community um my mom raised me on the rosicrucian religion and it's sort of like this i don't know how to describe it it's kind of like this religion that kind of adopted ancient egypt stuff and they developed like their own religion but it's got like these moral teachings for children and it's it's hard to explain but it was interesting and it kind of gave you workbooks and you had to like do these like moral things like they gave you like uh like thought puzzles and stuff and things to do that you had to make like moral decisions and things so i was raised rosicrucian uh but my mom was doing that because she's like wanted me to i guess have some sort of religious um uh, what's the word like be exposed to a bit of religion right and my mom was training in like different religions she was actually doing this like druid uh training and she actually like my mom's got like all these certificates like she's a master herbologist she's got like some rosicrucian things she reached like the highest level of rosicrucian order uh she like did all this druid order stuff i remember her working on that um she like oh she has her reiki master certification she used to do reiki for people um like the past life regression stuff was a certification so like she went out and did all the training for this stuff right um so i was sort of exposed to all that so i grew up with rosicrucian um this video is going to run out soon and when i reached a certain age then my mom uh she let me choose my own religion so at home growing up we had like these huge bookshelves just filled with books and there was like every book every religion like even the bible and everything like my mom was like you make your choice on it and there was every religion there was even like the satanic bible on there there was the actual bible there was like all these sort of religions um there was like hindu there was uh, there, there was everything, everything like she had a book on. So she told me to start reading and that I was to choose my own religion. Um, or I could like keep doing Rosicrucian if I wanted to, she said. Right. So that is what I started doing. The, sorry, that is what I started doing was I started reading through all the books and learning all the different religions and trying to understand them. I even went to like church sometimes, like I just went and like sort of explored religion and that's how i grew up is my mom's like explore it all and make your own decision on what you think is right for you so that is where we started uh we're at almost nine minutes i'm gonna stop the video here and then i'll talk about uh, me choosing my religion so hopefully the mic is okay on this one we'll test it okay um i listened to some of the part one my adhd uh i kind of i listened <laughs> i listened to a bit of it and then it sounded okay so i just kind of like decided to continue i didn't listen to the whole um like nine minutes because uh i i don't know adhd right um so my so this part, part two uh so i read up on a bunch of religions and I had friends who, I had some friends who were like born again Christians. I had some friends with different religions. Um, I had a couple of Jewish friends and I had like a Vietnamese friend at one point growing up too. Uh, so, you know, I was kind of familiar with some of their religions and I went to check out some of the churches, but I grew up like where I grew up, it's, it's very white here. Like it's like 
a lot of white people, not a lot of culture where I am. Uh, if I go down to Toronto, it's better. Now, when I was young, okay, side tangent. Um, I was big, I, I was, I was a big part of the LGBTQ community because my mom had a best friend who was gay. Um, and I called him my uncle. So in Toronto, there was a lot more culture. So I experienced more stuff in Toronto because uh, I would go down there with him and he would take us around everywhere. Um, he ended up contracting HIV and he died of AIDS and I did see like all of that happen. So I've seen like what that can do. And I was there during the whole, like, it was a weird time. It was a hard time for people in the LGBTQ community. Um, like I'm bisexual myself too. And like, they, they fought for their rights. Like it was, I was a big part, like I was really involved in it at a very young age. So. Uh, but so anyways, I ended up picking my religion as first I started off as um, Wiccan and I was doing solitary practitioner and I was following um, uh, what's his name? Scott. Okay. I can't remember his last name, uh, but it's a very good book for solitary practitioners. And then some of my other friends got interested in it. And so we were kind of doing some stuff together and we would go out and do some of the rituals together. I lived in like a little small town. We were by like a lake. So I was able to like go out and do full moon rituals and things like that. Uh, so I did a lot of like, you know, a lot of the different uh, rituals. I taught people how to do a lot of the stuff too. Um, and the reason that I picked that is because as pagan or witch, as a witch, you worship like my goddess is the earth and my god is the sun and i can physically see those right and they're physical things while i'm in my corporeal like body in this form in this lifetime so i picked them because it's something physical that i can see it's something physical that i can connect to and pray to and while i'm here in a physical form that is who i'm gonna like you know, sort of base my spirituality around. Um, I do believe in like reincarnation and things like that. And, you know, I guess we'll get down that path uh, eventually here in this discussion. Uh, but so that's why I ended up picking them. Um, then when I got a little bit older, I was looking for some like covens to join. Cause I, it was kind of like, I sort of ran like a little coven when I was younger, cause I was teaching people and it was very enjoyable to have other women to like do stuff with. There was like one guy that was with us. Um, so when I got a little bit older and I moved from the small town to the city that I used to like, and I'm in the city right now, uh, that I went to high school with, and this is a small city. Uh, but you know, I was living in a very small town but I really enjoyed the small town, but I had to move here because this is where there's like college and work. Uh, so I started looking for a coven. And so I joined a couple of local covens and they were like really pushing this whole narrative of like, they really were pressuring me to choose a pantheon. And I personally don't choose pantheons. Um, I don't like to pray to any specific names because a lot of names have had a lot of bloodshed attached to them. There's only a couple that I will sometimes pray to, and that'll be, uh, Hecate and also Gaia, but like Gaia is like mother earth and there hasn't really been any wars where thousands of people were killed in her name. Hecate, there's probably been some bloodshed so but i try to not call it any names and i try not use names so when i was trying to join a coven they're really pressuring me into choosing a pantheon and making me pray to names and i'm like i don't do that i just prayed to the earth to the sun to the moon like i don't put a name i don't put a god name behind it because i don't believe in that energy that's attached to that name over the thousands of eons or whatever that humans have been hurting each other over religion um, so they were giving me a hard time about that. And then they were like trying to do this whole hierarchy thing. And there was like a head witch and she was like bossing people around. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 I don't like any of this. So that's when I kind of went back and started doing some more research again and deciding like, I don't really want to be Wiccan because this is what the Wiccans are doing, right? They're doing this like group stuff together. They're like, pressuring you to pick pantheons or like making a high mistress and high coven, whatever lady, I can't remember what the name was. Um, 
So it's like, you know what? Wicca was technically invented in the 80s. It's actually not the old religion. And I'm like, I want to follow the old ways. Uh, but I don't want to just pick like people train people in Druidism, but it's not like the old Druidism. So like the old ways have been really lost. So that's when I just went on like my lifelong journey of learning the old ways. So I bought a bunch of books. I bought some books by Raven Gramassi to learn old Italian witchcraft. Um, Cause old Italian witchcraft is some of the older stuff and some of the more accurate stuff that you can find uh, the stragas and stuff. They kept like their information didn't get swallowed up. I don't know. They were able to keep a lot of their stuff still, um, written down and passed along versus like uh english like pagans and druids and stuff a lot of stuff is lost like no one really knows what stonehenge was for because the church really enveloped them and a lot of things have been lost over time so i call myself pagan because i try to follow as old as i can to the original ways like even going back to like some viking ways I try to go back to like the old, old ways. Um, and that's why I kind of chose this religion that I do. Right. Um, now along with that, you know, I've always kind of prayed to these things and done these rituals and things of that nature, but my whole family has had like, um, abilities, right. So like, I'm really, um, I'm an empath. So is my mom, my grandma, like my whole family has these abilities. But when I was younger, like being an empath really drains you. And I was at one point wanting to be like a psychologist because I was very interested in the human mind. Uh, but even just helping my friends through high school because I would try to be there for them and help them. And it was draining me. Like I could feel it. Um, and when I was doing some stuff, like I, I've been, I was doing ghost hunting. I did mediumship work and things like that. Um, and I was just having a lot of trouble, like separating it out and it was really draining me and causing me issues. So, um, I've turned it off multiple times in my life, which sets you back. Cause when you like turn it off and then you got to kind of like open yourself back up again. Uh, so I turned it off at one point when I was like a teenager, then I turned it back on again when I started doing ghost hunting. Um, and then my best friend who I was doing ghost hunting with, she died of cancer. Uh, we were only like 23 or something when she died. Um, and I, I'm sorry if I'm saying I'm a lot too, I apologize. Uh, so then I kind of turned everything back off again because like her death really affected me. Uh, and it was giving me issues. And then my other friend the next year took her own life, my other best friend. So there was like a lot of like issues with that. So I turned a lot of it off. Um, hold on, we're at 10 minutes. So we'll go to the next part. All right. Part three. Uh, so God, I feel like I've been jumping around all over the place, but I feel like if I sat down to try to write out my story, I'm just going to like get overwhelmed because there's so much stuff that has happened in my life. Talking about my friends who died, there's been a lot of death. Like I've talked to other people who are like my age and some people have never even experienced a death. Some people have only experienced their grandparents' death. Like, you know how many people in my life have died? Uh, there's, so like my uncle Tony died of the AIDS HIV. My Nana Marnie, who like raised me from when I was like one until like six, that was just like our landlady. But I lived in a guest house on a mansion property when I was from one to like five, one to six. And she would take care of me and take me to school and like feed me and like whatever, like while my mom was working. And so she was like a big part of my life. So she died. She was the first person in my life to die. And I was like five or six. Then my uncle Tony, he died of AIDS. Uh, then when I was a teenager, I had, there was like three, 
I think there was like three people who died in like car accidents, three or four car accidents, overdoses, which I think there was more. But the ones that affected me, there was like two that really affected me. And then, so that was when I was a teenager. And then I went to college and I met my best friend, Tanya, and she's the one, and I have like a um, tattoo. Oh, I can't even show this. It's a uh semicolon and it's for you know you know awareness so i'm at her in college and we just like best friends were like soulmates and she ended up taking her life and that was the year after my other friend died of cancer my friend mel and then i had uh, there's so many people in my life who have, who have passed and recently i've been thinking too like maybe there's a reason for that like maybe like there's a reason why i've been through so much like hardship and stuff because it's also like there's the death thing i grew up also like poor and stuff um i've had like bad luck follow me like i get like bouts of bad luck but recently i've been thinking that when i get the bad luck it's not someone's my stream uh when i get to bad luck i feel like it's not bad luck i feel like it always happens at a time in my life when i'm really stressed out about something and i think it's my energy and i'm just like causing things to explode like literally water issues have followed me around like you don't even know how many water accidents like sewage accidents pipes bursting uh, my apartment flooded like two times. I've had like toilets back up, like just constant water issues follow me around my whole life. Like a ridiculous amount of water issues and water damage issues follow me around. And I started thinking that it's like me and it's my energy and it's like the dam is breaking and I'm, I'm causing it with my own energy. And I just recently had this revelation when my apartment flooded again like the third time um so so yeah anyways got off on this tangent so i've been really just recently trying to refocus my energies and trying to kind of refine myself and working on this youtube channel that i've been doing like i should have been doing this stuff like these ghost videos these stories working on like paranormal stuff i should have been doing this for like years back because i grew up around this stuff and I feel like I just always never did it because there was always a stigma and people like kind of call you crazy for it. But now like it's very accepted online and I'm like, okay, so maybe like I could do this and it could be like, I can actually let myself out fully. Right. So that's sort of where we're at now. Now with the mediumship and everything that goes like way back. Um, like I was doing medium work when I was like, God, I think I was like seven. Uh, even like my mom took me to all these different things. I don't know what you would call them, but we went to all these Aboriginal things. Like she had a bunch of friends and I would do sweat lodges when I was very young. Like I was seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Doing sweat lodges. We were doing powwow stuff. And yeah, we would go to like the commercial powwow, but there was like other celebrations that were done privately um so i was like very much involved in that community uh, i did a lot of like ouija stuff mediumship work seances with people like all that stuff uh so i've always kind of really been open to a lot of it and a lot of my premonitions that i get i i get also my mom taught me how to lucid dream when i was like four three or four because i <laughs> So I grew up with like grim fairy tales and I grew up with horror story and stuff. So like all this horror stuff, like I'm very like, it's very normalized to me. And Disney was weird to me because it was too like, I don't know, kiddish for me as a child. But my, for some reason, when I was little, my hooked on phonics program, I was in like a special daycare that was training you to like read and write and do everything before you hit kindergarten. Uh, so there was a, there was a phonics, it wasn't hooked on phonics, either, but it was a phonics program. And there were like these little cartoon monsters and stuff in the book. And it kind of reminded me like Monsters, Inc. 
I would have nightmares about those freaking monsters. So my mom taught me how to lucid dream and she got me to like lucid dream and in my dream I was just to show them a mirror of themselves and it would scare them away. And so like I've been lucid dreaming since I was like three or four, right? Um, also I've been doing yoga since I was that young meditation since I was that young. Um, I did ninjutsu growing up as well as dance, but dance was like a side thing. Ninjutsu was more interesting. Uh, and so with the lucid dreaming, I get like premonition dreams and I can tell when I'm having a premonition dream versus just a normal dream because I lucid dream. So. I have a lot of premonition dreams, but my premonition dreams have always been like larger worldwide disasters. Uh, I've had premonitions of a lot of things that have happened. And then there's stuff that just like, I was like, oh, I just know that this is like, I just had a feeling or I just knew um, certain things. Like I always wanted to go to New Orleans. I loved Anne Rice growing up and I always wanted to go to New Orleans. And I was like, I want to go to New Orleans before it's ruined. Is what I would tell people. I'm like, I want to go before it's all gone, before it's different, before it's all ruined. And this was like before the hurricane, like way before. We're talking like decades. And people were like, Well, what do you mean ruined? I'm like, I don't know. Just something's gonna happen to it. I feel like, and I feel like I want to see it before like something ruins it. Um, and then the hurricane happened, which I never got to see it before it got wrecked, and I still haven't been able to see it. I, it's one of the places I'm still gonna go, but. But I always knew about Katrina that was going to happen. Um, I didn't know like it was going to be a hurricane. I just knew something was going to happen. And I used to have like recurring nightmares about uh, war in a desert and all this stuff, like constantly growing up. Um, so like I would have like big time premonition dreams. So I tend to like not have premonition stuff really about like, like closer to me people. It would tend to be like worldwide stuff. But I get like feelings and stuff and that's something like intuition I've been really like ignoring my intuition especially with dating I've been like dating guys and I'm like I've been ignoring my intuition and going oh oh I'm, I'm just overreacting or oh I have a bad feeling about this guy but I can't describe what it is and I would sound crazy if I broke up with him so I stay with them for like a month more or two or whatever and then everything ends up happening and I'm like oh that's that's what I was feeling but like I feel like a crazy person if I broke up with them but I've decided now I'm just gonna like accept my intuition so so this is kind of the world that I grew up in um and that's sort of like why I'm very much into this stuff um and why I'm kind of building up my YouTube and TikTok and everything around it uh this video is gonna run out so let's uh go to the next part all right uh part four we're on um when i was looking at the last part it looked like it started to add music in it which i don't want that so if music ends up on one of these like tiktok has been muting my stuff that has music in it that's over two minutes so like i'm gonna try to make sure there's no music i, I saved it to drafts so i'll take a look at it and make sure but hopefully the stuff doesn't get muted tiktok's even been muting like I was doing vlogs and there was like a fan in the background and it was like there's been music too long in this video so it muted the whole thing and I'm like it was just a fan it wasn't music so we'll see how this goes um so yeah this has been as organized as I thought it was going to be which is like all over the damn place and my story's been all over the freaking place so so yeah I guess I'm just gonna ramble I, I don't know man I'm not like great at like telling these big long stories so i might i might tell some like dating stories because they're really nuts but we'll get we'll get there um so yeah so that's why i chose this religion i've been really involved with spirits and things like that since i was very young i cut myself off from it a few times after a bunch of deaths too i kind of turned myself off of it um but now i've like turned i'm trying to get tapped back into it again right uh but one of the big things like my mom taught me how to do and everyone taught me how to do when i was young uh because you know we, i was in the community and there's lots of different people with different skills right they taught me like all about protection and things right uh so all my tattoos are like protection related or related to um like the pagan stuff right so i have more tattoos as well 
and there's a couple more that I want to get uh, for protection purposes as well. So, so yeah, I've been thinking about, I want to do some ghost hunting again. Um, I think I might just go in there like, I don't know, there's a lot of really cool tech and stuff like that. And I've always been really fascinated with the tech side of it. But I've been thinking about just hopping into like a haunted place and just kind of letting the intuition stuff and the, the mediumship and everything kind of talk for me. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I need to find some people like locally to go with because I won't go to places like that alone. Um, especially like there's a lot of places around here too. They're just dangerous. Like you got to be careful. So you want to have like a, a friend, uh, not like ghost dangerous, but like you never know what kind of people are going to be around middle of the night, like whatever it may be. So, <clears throat> so yeah, eventually I'll get back into it, but I just need to find some people that I can trust like going with. So, so yeah, so I grew up very much in this culture. Like I remember there was people taking, like there'd be people with cameras that took pictures of your aura at the psychic fairs. There was people selling gemstones. There was doing psychic readings. There was people doing Reiki healing, like all that stuff I kind of grew up around. And then my mom would take me to like all those retreats and things like that too. Um, hold on, I gotta fix my leg. Right, fibromyalgia requires you to like be constantly moving. You can't sit still because otherwise, then your body starts hurting more. Uh, so ended up happening was I, so I had a bad wisdom tooth surgery. It was a botched wisdom tooth surgery, and he like wrecked my sinus cavity and my jaw and everything. And that actually started my because I have chronic migraines, real bad ones, like a lot of them. Uh, and that started the migraines. And then shortly after the surgery, the wisdom tooth surgery, I was in like a little car accident, got whiplash and that added to the migraines. So, like my migraines are from a physical, um, damage, but between the wisdom tooth surgery and the car accident that triggered the fibromyalgia, cause my, if fibromyalgia runs in my family, uh, my grandpa's mom had it. My grandma had it. I think my mom has it, but she's just like kind of pushed through. Um, and now I have it too. Now I do feel like as well, people that are tapped into this stuff, like we do tend to deal with like things like chronic illnesses. And I, I do think that there might be a link to this kind of thing, uh, especially when I think my energies and stuff, I'm not very good at controlling them when I'm stressed. And that's what I'm trying to work on right now. And I've been doing some like personal growth training and things like that, trying to kind of get a handle on that. Uh, because I think when I'm stressed, I'm letting my own like spiritual energy and like the energy I have in me, like is building up and like kind of getting chaotic and causing me more problems. So I want to kind of work on that as well. Um, now this being all said, I'm very like spiritual person and maybe I should have said this in the first video, but like, I'm a very spiritual person. I believe in all this stuff, but I also love science and I like, like, I believe in debunking things I do. Um, and then there's times where I'm just, I'm being entertained, so I don't really care to debunk it, but like if I'm out like doing ghost hunting, I will debunk it. Um, I, I enjoy science. I love physics. I love, um, astronomy, astrophysics, um, I love, uh, shoot, what's quantum physics. I love quantum physics, um, and, and all that stuff. So like, I do believe in it, but I believe that physics and everything can actually help prove a lot of the spiritualism stuff. I also believe in reincarnation, but I also believe that when we die, we could be reincarnated on a different planet somewhere else or a different being. Like we try to see life as like us, like intelligent life. But I think there's intelligent life through like electricity that's inside like plasma clouds and things out there in the space. Like I do think there's life, but we can't comprehend it. We're not capable of understanding. So I do think that there's a link there with physics. And I think that like physics could prove a lot of the spiritualism stuff. And I do like to kind of think about physics when I'm looking at these kind of things. So uh, so I am a very scientific, like based person. I love science, uh, but you know, I grew up very spiritual and I do, I'm a very spiritual person too. Right. So, so I'm open to hearing whatever side 
Uh, I love discussing this stuff too and discussing theories and everything on everything like this too. Uh, so, but yeah, so that's a bit of background with me. Um, if you're wondering for my page, I've been doing this stuff just for a very, very, very long time, my whole life. I have taken breaks when I've life has gotten too hard, um, but I've come back to it recently and I'm really just wanting to explore this more. I've been having a lot of fun doing the paranormal history videos because I feel like I can put a little bit of like um, discussion of the spiritual with a little bit of like logical discussion and historical fact and uh, if I can throw some science stuff in there too that's really cool to do but but yeah so there's obviously more to my story and I'm just can't really think of stuff right now but maybe I'll do some more videos or if you guys want to like talk about anything let me know uh you know just whatever comes up um yes I do tarot and I do like astrology stuff and things of that nature um I do like I don't know energy works and stuff like that but I try to limit what I do because it's very draining for me um I do try to put up barriers and things of that nature and try to like control it but I'm not the best at it when I'm giving to people because I'm trying to help them too much so a lot of times I will like pull back on people a lot just because I'm too scared to like overdo it for myself right keep hearing a noise I don't know um I'm pretty sure there's like a shadow person in our house because my upstairs neighbor has been seeing it too but it's not bad it's just been like peeks around corners and hides things sometimes um but but our our driveway is actually haunted because somebody died out there so the driveway is really creepy at night we don't like going out there uh but yeah so that's my story so far if anything else pops up that i can think of i'm gonna just pop in here because like i said i'm just doing whatever my intuition is leading me to right now i'm kind of doing this path of like i'm following whatever my intuition says to do right now so you might see some more ramblings I don't know. You guys might not even like these because these are just random ramblings. So, but we'll see where it goes. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon.